Hi, hi everyone. My name is Colette Matriga. I'm a Thermomix consultant in Australia. Welcome to my Thermi Kitchen. Today we have got mozzarella on the menu. So have a look here. This is my um, what I've got left over from my last batch of mozzarella and you can see it is just beautiful, tastes amazing and the great thing it costs about a third of the price to make in your Thermomix. Pop it on your pizzas, on crisp breads, with a bit of balsamic glaze and tomatoes and a bit of basil and it's just delicious. So enough talk, let me show you how we actually make this amazing mozzarella. One of the things I love about the TM6 is that it will actually hold its temperature. It will climb nice and quickly and hold the temperature, which is perfect news for your cheese making. Now, the great news is mozzarella only needs four ingredients. The first ingredient is milk. Then we have a citric acid, iodized salt, and a rennet tablet. So let's look at those in a little bit more detail. So milk, you can use any kind of milk you like, except any milk that's been ultra heat treated, UHT. So you want a whole milk, it can be skimmed, it can be semi-fat, etc. So any whole milk. So I'm just using a farmer's own here and I'm gonna pop that into the Thermomix. All right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add into that my citric acid, which is, oh. That's a bit dangerous, putting salt and citric acid together. I think I need a taste test. Oh, <laughs> that's definitely the citric acid. <laughs> okay, wow, that packs a punch. I think I've had my vitamin C for the whole week there. <laughs> so here I've got half a cup of warm water and I'm going to pop in that citric acid and I just want to give that a stir um, so that the water becomes clear and that way you know it's good to go and then I'm going to pop that into the milk and then I'm going to pop the lid on and we're just going to mix that together and I think three seconds at speed three will be great. So what the citric acid does, it actually I guess adds that acidity. I'm actually going to give that another three seconds, that was a bit quick. It, um, and then it helps to, to actually coagulate the milk and set those curds for us. So once that's mixed, that's fantastic. The next thing I want to do now is to actually warm that up. So we want to warm it up to a temperature of um, 37 degrees. So 37 degrees and it can take anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes depending on how um, hot or cold your um, milk is. So I'm going to just set that for uh, 10 minutes and then I'll check on it. And then I want to go at um, speed one. And once that reaches that 37 degrees, I'm going to get on to the next stage. So we can see the temperature has reached 37 degrees. Now we can get on to the next stage of our cheese making. And what I've got here is a rennet tablet. Rennet is, um, comes in a whole number of forms. This is a vegetarian form which I like to use and I get this, um, it's by Mad Millie and I actually get it from the Kitchen Warehouse. They have a great online presence and are available in a whole number of cities. Um, and what I have done is I've just crushed one of these tablets and I am just going to mix that through um, in about a quarter of a cup of warm water. Not hot, just warm water. So just mixing that through. I'm going to add this milk to a thermos server that I've already warmed up. So I'm literally just going to pour this in into here. the rennet and what the rennet does it is responsible for I guess breaking down the proteins and it's going to create a lovely lovely stretchy um, element to our cheese which is exactly what we want in mozzarella so I'm adding all this in 
and I am stirring it. And I'm going to stir this as I count up to 25. So you want to make sure it's stirred in really well. So just counting to 25. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that lid on here and I'm going to leave it to sit to form those beautiful curds for about 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and hopefully these curds have set. So it's time to cut the curds. So what I'm going to do is to take off the lid and um, it's a little bit wibbly still, but we will get in there and we'll try. So I'm going to take a, a sharp knife and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to cut right to the bottom of these curds in a nice big line about oh, just under an inch and I'm going to create a crisscross pattern and then I'm going to leave these again in this thermo server for about 10 minutes and then I'll show you what has happened so I'm getting right down to the bottom and just cutting these through and then I'm just going to do it in the other direction so you can see they're cutting quite nicely. And I'm being fairly gentle. Okay. So the lid's gonna go on and we'll come back in about another 10 minutes. Okay, so this has been sitting probably for about 10-15 minutes, I think, maybe a slight bit longer. So let's have a look and see whether the curds and whey have separated. Yes, perfect. So that's exactly what I'm after. So you can see that we've got the curds formed there and that whey um, is actually separate. Now what I'm going to do is quite carefully is I'm going to pop this back into the Thermomix. So I'm just going to, as gentle as I can, just get in and I'm going to lift these up and pop them into the Thermomix because the next stage is I am going to cook the curds for about half an hour. So I'm just gently doing this. Alright, so I have transferred all of that whey and the curds back into the Thermomix bowl. That's going on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for half an hour because we're going to cook those curds at 40 degrees. And I'm going to do it on reverse at spoon speed, which is the very first speed. So I'm going to leave that to do its thing and then we'll see what happens next. Okay, so that stage has finished. The curds are cooked. Let's have a little look and see what we've got. Yep, that's looking pretty good. That's exactly as I'd like it. All separate. So the next stage is the draining off and getting rid of that whey and leaving the curds, which is what we're going to create that cheese with. So you can use a colander, um, a bit of cheesecloth, a nut milk bag, whatever you happen to have. Um, I have a big bowl and I've got one of these drum sieves which I just like to put on top. You don't need to use that, you could just use your cloth. Um, but on top of that I'm going to sit my muslin, it's a double layer of muslin. And then I'm just literally going to pour this in. And then remember when you're pouring with your Thermomix, you want to hold it from the bottom here. All right, from the bottom. That way you're not going to get that arm strain because this is pretty heavy. So just gently pouring it in. So you can see as I'm pouring it out, the whey and the curds, how they've all separated. And we've got lovely lumps of cheese happening there now already. Okay. It's beautiful. I'm just going to leave that on there to continue draining and get this last little bit out. Lovely little pieces. These curds are 
curds coming out, don't to miss those because that's going to be lovely stretchy mozzarella in a few minutes. Alright, so this, I'm not going to wash that, that's going back on. But I do want to um, drain this and get this as well drained as I possibly can. Now you don't want to squeeze it, but you can tease it. So you can see, just getting all this out. So usually from a two litre bottle of milk, I'll get anywhere between about 350 to 400 grams of mozzarella. I've already told you how inexpensive it is to make. So it's about the third of the price of shop-bought mozzarella. And of course it's got nothing in there that will um, kind of be unhealthy, so to speak. Um, it will last uh, about a week in your fridge and you can freeze it as well. And of course, if you look at the shelf life in the shops of the cheese, it lasts a lot longer. And you've got to wonder why that is. That's why I like making my own mozzarella at home. It makes me feel a bit like a domestic goddess. I can make cheese. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's good. You can actually leave that to hang for 10 minutes if you want to, but that's okay because we will eventually get rid of that little bit of excess. So what we've got here is the whey, Andrew. And in my recipe notes, I will tell you some tips and usages for this whey. It's pure protein. You can add it to your smoothies. Um, you can freeze it in ice cube format. And it's great to add when the liquid is needed in baking as well. So you're getting all that extra protein. So what I'm going to do now is to add these into the burner mix. So I'm literally just going to drop all this in to the Thermomix and do the last little stage in the Thermomix. So just so you can see exactly what I've got, I've got a shape of um, cheese, which is very exciting, but it's not at all stretchy. It's a bit cottage cheesy like, so we need to make this into mozzarella. So the first thing we're going to do is to put it back onto the Thermomix and I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt that's going to go in and then I'm going to get the Thermomix to knead this. So I'm literally going into the kneading function and bum, 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 where are we kneading? The dough function and I want to go for about two minutes. All right, so the kneading has finished. Let's look at what we've got. Now, remember the first time I did my mozzarella and I saw it at this stage, I thought I had totally ruined it. Um, but don't worry, this is what it looks like. Um, don't panic, it's still good. So, I'm going to now take this out. So it's already started that stretchiness, but it's gone a little bit cold. So what I need to do is to warm that up. And what I'm going to do to warm it up is to pop it into the microwave for about 30 seconds. Because by warming it up, what we're going to do is get rid of the last elements of whey from here. So literally, I'm just going to pop that down and pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds. So that's at 900 watts, so 900 a thousand. Don't go too far because you will ruin it. I think 30 seconds is the best kind of time frame to do this. And you might need to do this a couple, maybe even three times. You want to start to um, get rid of that way and to start to create that stretchiness in it. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got. So that's great. Okay, you can see it started a little bit like, oh, actually the stretchiness has started. I think I've got rid of so much of that whey. So what I want to do is form it into a bowl. And you can see I've hardly got anything there. In fact, I'm going to drop this into my sieve and just gently kind of pat that down because this is nearly there. This is nearly there, guys. So I'm going to go back in. So I've got a little bit out there. And what I'm looking for 
Now be careful, it can be a bit hot, because I'm looking for that mozzarella stretch. So we're not quite there. So what I'm going to do is I am now going to pour off that little bit extra, and I'm going to pop it back in again for another 30 seconds. And I think that will be done. Slightly under, because I think we're nearly there with this one. So looking at this, you can see that stretch, that shine, how beautiful that's looking. Again, get rid of that excess. Keep forming it into that ball. Oh, this is looking brilliant. All right, I think we're just about there. I don't think I'm going to need to do this again. So, remember this is going to be hot, so just test, you can use gloves, but look, see how that's forming beautifully? That's mozzarella, I don't need to do anything else now, I'm just going to give that one more strain off, it is hot, so that's looking great, excellent, so that's beautiful, so um, what we want to do then is just kind of fold it, fold it, it is pretty hot, um, that looks amazing. And then all you need to do to actually get your lovely little balls is once you're happy with the stretch and the gloss etc that you've got is you're just going to fold it back on itself and what you can actually do is to push it through and then just clump it off at the end and then you'll just pop those in and that's one lovely little ball that you've got there. So just to show you again, um, I'm just going to push that through from the bottom, up, up through here, and then I'm squeezing my hands here at the back, and then just going to tuck that under, and that's another beautiful ball of mozzarella. Another way that you can actually do this is just to take a piece and just literally just keep folding it in under itself. So I reckon that will be about 350 grams of lovely mozzarella. And I'll just pick that up and just give that a little bit of a shape. And actually normally what I would do is plunge that into cold water and that would keep that shape. So have some cold water, then it won't flatten like this. So just take one of these little beasties into its shape, round and round, looking beautiful. And then straight into the cold water. And again, straight into cold water. And that's your lovely, fresh, firmly made mozzarella cheese. It does not get any better. Yum. Now, of course, you can marinate that with a mixture of herbs and oils, which is beautiful. And as I said, it does freeze quite well. Um, so you could actually have that frozen. So just to show you, let's cut off a little slice. Um, it's probably not quite cold enough, but it will be beautiful. There are many people that love fresh mozzarella at this stage, just like this. They say this is the best time to eat it. So all I'm going to do is chop off a little piece so you can see how beautiful that is. Just like you get in the shops. Beautiful, fresh. Mm. That's really good. Actually, I reckon that's one of my best batches. Mm. Seriously good. Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. All right. So have, have a go. Don't be frightened of it. There's a few stages. Um, but you know what you can do with that. There's so many things on pizzas, in your Parmigiano sourcing, etc. So um, have fun. And I'll pop the recipe up on my page a bit later. Thanks. My name's Colette Petriga. Bye for now.